Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use the GSAP and the scroll trigger JavaScript libraries to create all kinds of scroll triggered animations in Elementor. In my previous video I demonstrated practical usage of the locomotive scroll library and today I'll also let you know how to add the smooth scrolling to the GSAP scroll trigger combo. In order to be able to comprehend what I'll be talking about here, you have to a. Have at least a basic knowledge of JavaScript b. Understand what is GSAP and c. Understand the purpose of scroll trigger. I'm not about to teach you how to code for GSAP or scroll trigger, except one little example. I'll rather show you how to deploy these libraries in Elementor and then leave you to study the training file. So the first step is to enable or activate both GSAP and the scroll trigger in steroids for Elementor plugin settings. I'll activate the locomotive scroll a little bit later so you can see the difference between the normal and the smooth scroll at the end. This tutorial is not about controlling widgets by using sliders, buttons or checkboxes, this is rather how you communicate with them via the JavaScript code. At this point, you'll either need some third-party plugin for WordPress that allows you to embed the JavaScript code to your website or, in case you are the Elementor Pro user, you can go to Elementor custom code and add a new JavaScript file or the code. I'm going to name my file gsap and scroll trigger demo. Location will be by the end and I'll pick the lowest priority possible. You won't be wrong if you select anything else because our code depends on some other libraries anyway. At the end let's enclose everything with a couple of script tags. If you think that now I can just add some GSAP code and everything will start working right off the bat, you are wrong. Why? Because there's a great chance that our target libraries have not been initiated before our own code gets executed. It depends on how WordPress decides to load stuff, so to speak. So I'll start everything with creating the anonymous JavaScript function that will be executed at some point. Why the anonymous function? Well, there's more than just one reason, but in general, anonymous function can effectively ensure that JavaScript is written on a page without causing global variables to be contaminated. So, our first step is to check whether both of our libraries, GSAP and Scroll Trigger, are initiated. For that purpose, I'm going to use the set interval JS method that is meant to call a function repeatedly until required condition or the clause inside the function is met. And the clause says that if JSAP and the scroll trigger have become a part of the global object named window, we can proceed with the rest of the code. After that, we can be safe to use any available property or method of both GSAP and the scroll trigger. I'm going to create another function named myStuff and I'm going to place all of my future code inside that function, which is supposed to be called or executed as a part of the previously mentioned clause. This is why I have to call the function only in case both the GSAP and the scroll trigger are in the game. At the end, I should clear interval in order to cut off the endless loop. I know I could have skipped all of what I just said, do the simple copy paste and tell you to do the same, but I just wanted to provide a brief insight on behalf of those who might be interested. As usually, I have prepared a training file that can be downloaded from the link in the description of this video. You'll be able to find two folders in the package. The first one is without the required locomotive scroll JavaScript code and the second one has it. You'll figure everything out by watching this tutorial to the end. Alrighty, let's animate something. My animation target will be the background overlay of the hero section. I have attached my hero image to the background overlay element rather than just a simple background image of the section itself. There's no special reason for taking that route, except the fact that it is also it also stands as a perfectly valid option. What I want to achieve is to make the background overlay scale up as I scroll the page down. My first step is to add the ID to my hero section. I'll go to, to the advanced tab, advanced panel, and I'll type in hero into the CSS ID input field. Why did I do that? Because I cannot assign any custom ID to the background overlay element, there's no option to do that via the interface, and the first IDable element is the section itself. And why do I have to assign any custom ID or the custom class name to any of my sections, columns, widgets, or the background overlay element? 
Well, this is how I'm going to refer them in my custom JavaScript code. So the whole point of creating the, the custom class name or the custom ID is to create the unique reference. Now I can get back to my custom JavaScript code and finally tell to GSAP which element to animate and which CSS properties to animate. It's going to be quite simple because I have only one property to animate, which is named scale. All of the code goes inside my stuff function and I'll start with creating two variables, hero ID and BG overlay. The first one is supposed to hold the reference to the section itself while the second one creates the reference to the background overlay, which is the child element of the hero section. You can always check the page source code by using developer tools in order to be sure which element you are targeting or looking for in case of not being able to assign the custom ID or the class name directly in Elementor. And now I'll type in gsap to open close a pair of normal brackets and inside of which I'm going to place a pair of curly brackets. The, the very first parameter will be BG overlay, okay, which represents the reference to the target element. Now I'm going to add scale inside of curly brackets, scale 1.5. Scale is the CSS property that I want to animate. Okay, and now I'm going to stop for a moment and show you what this little tiny piece of code does to my hero section. I'll save the code and go to the preview so you can see what's going on. So what you can see on the screen is that the hero section is scaled instantly as the page loads and which is perfectly fine because that's exactly what I have instructed. Now I'll go back to the JavaScript and I'm going to add the code required to control the animation with the scroller. So it looks like it's time to deploy our scroll trigger. So scroll trigger, curly brackets, and I'm going to type in trigger, again bg overlay, it should be the element that is supposed to trigger the animation. Start is going to be top top, which says that when the trigger element top hits the top of the viewport, start the scaling of the background overlay. And now I'm going to save the file once again, then go back to the front end to see where are we at right now and what these two lines bring to the table. It's kind of obvious that the animation doesn't run immediately upon the page load, but once I roll the mouse, it starts to play and it plays all the way through. However, I want the full control over the animation timeline, not just trigger it, I want it to respond to the scroller. That's why I'm going to have to add another property to my scroll trigger block and which is named scrub. That is supposed to link the scroll position to an animation's progress, making the scroll bar act like a scrubber. And if I save the work and go back to the front end, I should be able to see the final result. Alright, that's it. That's exactly what I was planning to do with my hero section. The scrubber value can also be numeric instead of boolean and if you assign a number, which represents the number of seconds to delay, you'll end up with a smoother scaling or zooming. Just to mention that you can learn quite quickly about many other available properties if you open the GSAP cheat sheet page. Most of the code represents the link to the corresponding page in the documentation, which is a really nice feature for those who decided to learn how to code for GSAP and scroll trigger. And it's not that hard, trust me. What I'll do next is to copy paste the rest of the JavaScript code with a few more examples because there's not enough time in this video to process them all. I already said that you'll be able to download the training file and study the code on your own. There's pretty much a little bit of everything that might be interesting to beginners. If you ask yourself, how does the locomotive scroll fit the story? Well, you obviously notice that the smooth scrolling doesn't exist here. All of these examples work with a normal scroll rate that differs from browser to browser. Many people expressed a bit of resentment after the previous video because they realized that locomotive scroll cannot handle sticky or fixed position elements. The truth is that it's not about the locomotive scroll being faulty, but rather about the fact that the locomotive scroll relies on a CSS transforms. So what's the problem? It's actually quite simple. Position fixed under something with a transform no longer has fixed behavior. As simple as that. 
Anyhow, if you ever decide to go for the locomotive scroll plus the G-SAP and the scroll trigger combo, here's what it takes to make it work. First of all, I have to extend my JavaScript code a little bit. It's due to the fact that besides the GSAP and the scroll trigger, I have to be sure that the locomotive scroll has been initiated as well. At the very beginning, I'll add a variable, let loco scroll, and it's going to be used to store my locomotive scroll object once available. Next, I need another condition to be met beside two already existing ones. And this one checks whether the local scroll has become a part of the global object name window. Don't be confused with the SFE local scroll object name, it's coming from Steroids for Elementor. Okay, so if the locomotive scroll has been initiated successfully, store it to the local variable created at the beginning. Everything else in this code block remains unchanged. Now, Hence the fact that both locomotive scroll and the scroll trigger hijack the normal scroller, there's a fight going on in the background. And in order to reconcile these two, we need a chunk of code that resolves the conflict, so to speak. All I'm gonna do now is copy paste one piece of code on top of my existing code inside my stuff function, and then another piece at the very bottom, below everything else. And that's exactly what you need to do every time you plan to use the locomotive scroll with the scroll trigger. And lastly, I have to let the scroll trigger know the proper scroller element associated to it. By the default is the window element, however, hence the locomotive scroll has been involved, it's not a window anymore, it's our SFE locomotive scroll wrapper. You can find it by using developer tools of your browser. That's why I'm going to add the scroller property to each and every scroll trigger instance in my JavaScript code. And I'm going to assign the value of SFE locomotive scroll wrapper. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. There's like seven or eight scroll triggers across the code. And all I have to do is copy paste. Okay. Now I just have to fire up the locomotive scroll and remove the data scroll section attributes from the DOM. These attributes were added automatically with the locomotive scroll library activation, but hence the fact these have a negative impact on the fixed or sticky position elements, we have to get rid of them or otherwise the element pinning won't function correctly. Since the version 176 of Steroids for Elementor, you can do that from the locomotive scroll settings panel or the section. Now I'm gonna save the settings and do the final preview of our training file. I hope I did everything right. So. Let's see the final print. Yes, as far as I can tell, it all works nice and smooth. I'm really excited to be able to use GSAP with Elementor and do all this fancy stuff. It brings your Elementor website to a whole new level. I mean, everything looks, looks alive. It's kind of classy, no matter how crap your page actually is. Anyhow, feel free to comment Ask the question if in doubt, don't forget to check the video description for more useful links, okay? And in case you plan to buy the Element Pro license for yourself or your client, please use my own affiliate link because that's how you help me keep this channel and the plugin alive without spending a dime. Any donation is welcome and highly appreciated and I'm saying big thanks to everyone who already donated. Other than that, stay well, peace and love.